How you doing? It's been a little bit. Uh, for this video I wanted to focus on the castle's multi-gate which I got over here. Um, first off I want to apologize if the video is a touch blurry. Um, I'm looking to upgrade cameras soon. So uh, for the time being we just have to bear with it and I very much appreciate your patience. Um, why I want to focus on this is to show some cool functionality with this specific module. I think for the next couple of videos I will focus on this. Um, first off, uh, I'll focus on it individually and then I'll focus on it uh, in more complex patterns uh, 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 as I keep doing uh, so you know. Um, for me, it really reminded me of divisions in a way. So just to recap, uh, before that cable falls on the ground, and it did anyways, and another one did, so distraction. Um, so video divisions is over here. So let me just plug into the green and then go to 8. So horizontally or vertically it breaks up the screen either by the power of 2 in this. Uh, so in this example you know you're in 8 and then 1 or yeah 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and as you can see for each section it goes by the power of two um, so as you can see right there and then let's just do vertically just to show you as well so eight seven six five four three two one but it also allows you to have individual control of the bars across the screen so like this so that's eight seven six five four, three, two, one, and then let's just do it vertically just for the sake of it. So we're now at one, two, again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. To me, uh, I think Divisions is a huge module to have uh, in terms of composition and just in general of CV control. I think it's very versatile and I think it really is a great tool if you just want static lines or to break up modulation sections and things like that. I know in other videos I've focused on Divisions and I'll probably do some more videos on it. But specifically I wanted to focus on the multi-gate. So what I'm just going to do is just do two prismatic rays through it and then just straight to the cadet to show just some of the basic ideas, what can come from the different outputs, but then I'll modulate the prismatic rays um, just to give a better idea from, um, 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 so you know, I got to really stop doing that <clears throat> from the triple video LFO. So let's start it out. We're going to go from this prismatic ray into A and then from this prismatic ray into B. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, let's do the ore to start into the green. Awesome. Already getting something interesting. Let's just take out the prismatic ray that goes to B, just to get an idea. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually start from the, all of the outputs so you can get an idea. So this is prismatic ray just into A, and so we got the, was that the Zor? Zorn? Yep, X N O R. Please correct me and tell me how to pronounce that correctly, please. So we got that, and then Zor. So you can kind of see it has kind of that idea of the divisions, where it's like the positive negative. Well, it's more like divisions plus ramps in a way, positive negative. And then we got the Nor. Can't really tell too much of a difference. The Or, it's kind of similar. Then the Nand, which is nothing, and then And which is just a solid. So now let's just take, um, let's put in B and let's just take out of A just to get a clear idea because this was horizontally. Or I have, so let me just back up. So the first prismatic ray that's going into A is vertical and the second one which is going into B is horizontal. So now to do uh, again the Zorn um, into here, <laughs> into the blue, so you can see how it kind of segments the screen. Now Zor inversion and then was that again the nor pretty similar or nand and then and which is solid um, in other videos I'll go through you know especially with more complex signals going through this module you can get actually really good depth when you put it through a video blend matrix or other VCAs 
when you re-blend them, as in re-blend the outputs of these in different ways, you can actually get some really unique layering through modulation. But I think right now we're not going to so much focus on that. We're just going to do again A is horizontal and B, or A is vertical and B is horizontal. Wow, I'm just out of it right now. Sorry. Um, so right now we're just going to go from, let's just say, the or to the blue. And you can see where together they've created this really unique pattern which it takes into effect what I showed in the previous one where there's a positive negative for horizontal and same with vertical but it creates these boxes so let's just start from the Zorn uh, at the top awesome already again this really cool cross hatching idea and that's just with two prismatic rays as you can see next we're gonna do the Zor it's the inversion of that so you can already see where that would be pretty useful and then we're going to do the nor. See, this is where you can tell the differences is when you put in the AB. And this is where I view it as very powerful, especially in terms of compositionally, when you really want to decide, let's say you want this design, and then you could use a ramps to block the left side, let's say. And now you have a segmented, essentially boxed area on the right side. Um, but let's just keep going. I mean, I'm speaking ahead. And, and again, I, I don't have a ton of experience with this so far. I'm pretty much learning it with you right now. Um, I've had some hours in it, but at the same time, I think it's very important to work through it just as if I just purchased it so I can clearly understand the workflow and also kind of be surprised at the same time. So we're in NOR, and now we're going to OR. And you can see, again, so NOR, OR, and now we're going to go to NAND. I really like that. Um, this Now you can see where this is a similar to the divisions in a way where you would use the divisions to take, make one beam across and maybe one beam below and mix that together with a, whole, a vertical signal and taking from the horizontal divisions. This is where I view this castles module, the multi-gate, really useful. Um, especially if you had a couple of them. I, uh, as I was telling Philip, which thank you, Philip, for these, and also thank you, LZX, for producing these. Um, I could see myself having like, at least six of them. And why I know that sounds excessive, but why I say that is because when you start to layer these and you had individual channels for each, or you had two of these for each channel, you could create some really complex hatching and just in general segmentation and layering, uh, especially when you start to modulate with different VCAs or going through staircases or bridges or shape changes, you could really have a powerful, powerful setup with a bunch of these and just some rays. But again, I mean, I'm just thinking in different you know formats and granted you know you'd obviously want more modules than just those but I mean it's also interesting to think about having a set of modules or having a small case which I'm, I'm pondering too of just where it's pure experimentation where you have like triples or quadruples of certain castles or cadets to really see what the extendability can be when you have stacked utilities which as many people know I'm very much into the belief that utilities are the really important and especially if you have ones you can keep waterfalling meaning like into one and then to the other and to the other and then being able to stack them and going back into each other I think that's really important to get a lot of mileage out of a small amount of HP in your case uh, and again we're just on NAND and now we're gonna go to AND and you can just see it's the inversion so right now let me just move the different rays so you can see so this is the horizontal let's just keep it right there nice uh, format, or not even format, but just segmentation and composition, and I like that. So all I just did here, well, in the first one, I was just playing with the frequency, you know, and I just won three, so you can clearly see everything, and then with the vertical one, I'm playing with the multiply. So you can see with the multiply, you can get some interesting movement, especially if you were to modulate it. And so what I did there is playing with the pedestal, so it can disappear, and the frequency right there. But now, Let's start to modulate one of them. We're going to do the vertical one first, just to experiment from the triple video alpha. Bam. So, not so much. Let's go to pedestal. 
there we go. And like anything, I'm just learning about this too, so there's going to be some caveats, there's going to be some interesting moments, especially me being confused, and that is really cool right there. So the triple video LFO moving the pedestal of the vertical. Okay, so let's play with the attenuation. Let's just move the pedestal some more and the attenuation. That's really nice. So now let's modulate the other one. Um, where are my longer cables that aren't banana cables? Um, this one's excessively long, so I apologize if it takes up a lot in view. So we're going to go from the second channel the triple video LFO now to the horizontal. So we're going to try the frequency of that and see what we can do here. Okay, let's slow it down. Okay, so you can see where obviously it's scrolling it, but you can have control of the length of the vertical bars, which essentially are moving up and down, but I'm still scrolling the horizontal, as you can see right here. And right there, you can see where you can get even a lot of depth with this module. There's two LFO sources with the horizontal being modulating the frequency and then the vertical being modulating the pedestal. And this type of thing right here, you almost could create, let's see, almost like raindrop looks or in the slow pace. This is where I definitely need to get a pendulum um, so I can slow it down even farther. So now I'm scrolling the horizontal. Yeah, my triple video LFO is definitely, I should have left my case on. I've definitely found with some modules, especially that one, since I've had it for a while. The longer I keep it on, the more stable it gets, but who knows, maybe it's just in my head, which it very much could be. So what I did there is that I, because with the triple video LFO, LFO, you can shape it like that. So that's the middle, it's a triangle wave, left, right. So let me just slow it down or get it to a point where it's fairly stable. Okay, so you can see there, that's a pretty unique design in terms of you got the slow modulation vertically and then you have the other source of modulation making it almost move like a snake. I think that's really interesting. So let's see, let's see, yeah. So you can see it's increasing the speed. Let me even slow that down farther. And let's just bring it back just so you can get a better idea. So this is at the lowest point of modulation. So now let's just show you again. This is the vertical and this is the horizontal. Now let's increase the horizontal. Whoops. Whoops. There we go. And then let's increase the vertical. Okay, in this case, uh, there we go. That's pretty cool. So now you can see even farther. Let me actually move this over and you can get a better idea. You can see how now before it was essentially kind of like before, I guess you could explain it as like exclamation points without the point, they're moving up and down, and then the horizontal is kind of, you know, modulating it in a unique way, but now it looks like they're slowly connecting over time and look individualistic. That is something that I think is really cool with this module, especially modulating two sources. And I mean, we're just coming out the and. So let's say we want to now take the Zor and go to green. Okay. Now we got something even more interesting. Okay, actually, let's try it in the red. So it makes pink. Maybe let's try it going to the nor, or let's say the or, or let's say, which one is that? The nand. Bam, I kind of like the nand, so it lights it up a little bit. Okay, that's cool. Let's say we still want to use a multi-gate and we wanted to go to the staircase. Let's say we took the nor going to the source of the staircase and we take divided by two and we go to green. Let's see what we can get here. That might be my, I think that's my cable. Let me Okay, yep, my cables are definitely getting a little old at this point considering the patching mileage. But you can see 
even with a staircase, two prismatic rays in the multi-gate, you can get a lot of mileage out of this in terms of complexity, slow movement. Um, there's definitely a lot more I'm going to go through in other videos. I think this may be a decent place to stop. Um, let's just try one more thing. I'm going to actually be wild. And it's not that wild, I guess, or what is wild is the question. I hope that's quoted, thanks Leslie, is that um, you take another part from the multi-gate and go into, let's say, the frequency VC. Okay, not so much. Let's go to the phase. Let's go, and that was the, what was that? The Zorn. And <laughs> now let's go to the OR and see what that does. Okay, maybe let's go back to the frequency. Okay, so more or less what that does too is provide a little subtlety to the horizontal lines there. Um, let's then just take um, the, the vertical prismatic ray and go into the phase and see what happens with that. Let's try the horizontal. See, the horizontal kind of lights up the entire structure, but I think I like the idea of using it like this where it's more of lighting up the horizontal, not the internal structure, AKA the actual red area. So what I really like about this is that, so by using the multi-gate, okay, so using a horizontal prismatic ray, which is this one, and a vertical one, you can first get some really interesting segmentation similar to using parts of the divisions, right? But then when you start to modulate them, you can get things like this. So what I mean by things like this is you get the first scrolling horizontal. So that's the vertical, sorry. So let's just start with that with the scrolling vertical. And you can see where you can kind of break it up and you get, I guess I think of it as like a little fish type of thing. And now the horizontal, by doing that, that creates the movement of the little fish and how fast it goes. Now that blue area is actually from the staircase from another output of the multi-gate, which is, if I can see it from that angle, is the nor going into the staircase and then going out to green. Other one, and so along with that, we have the and going into blue, and we have the no, and, uh, sorry, the nand. So and was before going to blue, and the nand going into red. Um, and from there, we have the vertical prismatic ray modulating the phase of the staircase, and then we also have this or modulating the frequency of the staircase. So you can see there's the or right there. So it kind of creates a unique type of shading, almost like a filtered effect horizontally. And as you can see, it kind of mutes the red into yellow and orange really fast, which is really cool. And again, the segmentation, I think, is the, a really strong aspect of this module. And I definitely will start to do more videos on this. But I just thought this would be a great introduction to start, and I hope you learned something about the castle's multi-gate. Thanks.